I'm an entrepreneur and I have ADHD. Though I didn't get diagnosed until I was older, about in my 30s. My company was small, growing at the time, and I noticed that some of my key people were having a really hard time with the way I worked and processed information. My version of ADHD is something like an intense game of whack-a-mole that goes inside my head constantly from the time I wake up in the morning to the time I fall asleep at night. Thoughts, images, questions, memories, ideas all pop into my head seemingly out of nowhere. And each one holds the promise of something so amazing that I just have to follow up on it right then and there. And maybe some of you can relate to that. And it would drive people crazy because I could be in the middle of a very important meeting, be so distracted by a new thought or idea that I just had to follow up on it right there, and people who couldn't keep up with me and change direction that quickly really tended to suffer. And it was starting to cause some real problems. So I started to do something about it. I went and saw a doctor and went through a formal assessment and diagnostic process. And through this journey, I realized that I've always had ADHD. I mean, after all, the the traits that I've had have always been there. You don't just wake up one day and develop ADHD as an adult. You've always had it. So as we were going through my social and my educational history, it became pretty obvious that my mild hyperactivity and severe impulsivity had always been there. So after my diagnosis, I thought, wow, ADHD is a disability. And I have ADHD. So how could I have been disabled my entire life and I'm just learning about it now? It didn't resonate. I never felt disabled. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I felt different or misunderstood, but never disabled. I was definitely that kid who would blurt out answers in class without raising his hand, or would get my work done really early and then distract all the other kids so they couldn't finish their work. But I was also that kid who would raise more money selling raffle tickets for all the school fundraisers than anybody else in school. And I would hustle to make money doing normal kid things like shoveling driveways, mowing lawns, and even doing things like selling bubble gum and maybe even firecrackers in school. <laughs> but the point is that I could be highly functional in some contexts and somewhat dysfunctional in others. So I started pharmaceutical drugs. And I didn't really like them very much because they just didn't make me feel right. I was probably much easier to handle and manage, probably less impulsive, probably less uh, hyperactive. But I felt like the things that I used to do really well were all of a sudden a struggle. So things like looking at problems from a different point of view, coming up with new solutions to them, generating enthusiasm about my company, or conceiving of new products or services, anticipating customer demands, or things like connecting with key people in my network in a meaningful way all of a sudden seemed like a struggle to me. And I didn't like it very much. And the image that I kept getting was that I was wearing kryptonite around my neck, and it was taking my power away from me. And at the time, I was reading a lot of books about ADHD in adults, and I had a revelation that maybe, instead of being a disability, my ADHD was really my superpower. And that resonated a lot more. My business exists to help young children with disabilities. And as a university professor, I teach entrepreneurship to college students. Many of them, I suspect, have ADHD. I'm also a member of Young Presidents Organization, or YPO. And YPO is a global peer network for CEOs. And one of the things I really love about YPO is the way I connect with its members. It's very comfortable. It's like my tribe. So you probably won't be surprised to hear that a lot of them present just like me in terms of their ADHD. And it's actually something of a running joke in YPO because so many of us have it, and we kind of laugh about it. So clearly, this is a very big part of my life. And I feel fortunate that through my role as a professor at Syracuse University, I get to dig into this topic in a really meaningful way. You see, my office is right next door to a guy named Johan Wickland. And Johan is one of the premier entrepreneurship researchers in the world. And like me, he got diagnosed with ADHD as an adult. And he studies the effects of ADHD on entrepreneurship. So for me, he's like you know the best next door neighbor ever. <laughs> so let me recap for a minute. I'm an entrepreneur with a disability whose business helps others with disabilities. I teach at the college. I teach entrepreneurship. And a lot of my students, I suspect, they have disabilities. I hang out with other founder CEOs who have the same disability as me. My next door neighbor at the university studies entrepreneurship. He got diagnosed with the same disability as me as an adult just like me. And he studies the effects of that disability on entrepreneurship. Yeah. <laughs> Did I mention whack-a-mole before? Yeah. So 
One day, Johan and I were having lunch, and I pitched the idea of looking at ADHD among YPO members because I thought it would be fun to test my hypothesis about how much YPO has ADHD in it. But I also thought it would be really interesting to look at a highly successful group of entrepreneurs and how ADHD impacts them. Because to join YPO, you have to have a reasonably big company. The companies have to be at least 13 million in sales with 50 employees. So this would be a very successful sample to look at. So Johan loved it, he was on board, and we developed a survey and we sent it out. And what we got back was about 400 responses. And interestingly enough, of those 400 responses, about 100 of them were too incomplete to use. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to explain that one clearly, right? You get it, yeah, very interesting. So we hadn't even started the analysis and we were getting some pretty interesting results. So we had about 90% were men, 10% were women, but like we expected, these were pretty big companies, right? The average size was $24 million in revenue and 100 employees. So clearly a very successful group of entrepreneurs. Now, to identify those with ADHD, we used a standardized self-reporting ADHD scale. It's the same one used by the World Health Organization to identify ADHD traits among adults. And the way it works is that if you score above a certain threshold on an 18-point scale, you're said to have traits consistent with an ADHD diagnosis. And what we found was startling. It was amazing. 62% of this sample of highly successful entrepreneurs identified with traits consistent with an ADHD diagnosis. 62%. That's amazing especially when you consider that only 12% of the youth population in the United States has a formal diagnosis, and experts think that that is even out of control. So 62% is amazing. So then we started to look at other general measures of entrepreneurship and how they relate with ADHD. And we looked at how entrepreneurial the firms are that are led by these entrepreneurs. We call this entrepreneurial orientation. And what we found was that those with ADHD had companies that scored higher on some basic measurements of entrepreneurial orientation. So things like uh, proactivity and innovation and things like that. The next thing we looked at were specific traits consistent with ADHD diagnoses and how that played out in terms of entrepreneurship. And this was also pretty interesting. What we found was that those with ADHD scored much higher on impulsivity ratings than those without ADHD. So things like sensation seeking, sense of urgency, or lack of premeditation, or in other words, not having to think too much before you act. Now you can imagine how these traits could definitely have negative consequences, right? But hopefully by now you could imagine how these same traits could be advantageous in the context of entrepreneurship. All right, so then we started to look at some very specific measurements of entrepreneurial success. And one of the first things we looked at was serial entrepreneurship. And serial entrepreneurs are people who start multiple companies over the course of their careers. And in fact, those with ADHD started more companies than those without. Actually, those with ADHD were more likely to be in the process of starting a company at the time of the survey, which was also kind of cool. All right? So think about it, that sensation seeking, sense of urgency, general ants in your pants, right? The ability to act quickly without overthinking things. If those are traits that you possess, you'll probably be more comfortable in a serial entrepreneurship type of lifestyle. Now, the next thing we looked at were some other measurements of success. Growth rates of your company. This is an often cited statistic, right? Of a measurement of business success. And again, we found that those with ADHD had higher growth rates than those without. Now, growth in and of itself may not be that big of a deal, right? It could be good, but it doesn't necessarily have to be good. So then we looked at how these companies stacked up against their competition over a three-year period. And what we found was that those with ADHD did report slightly better performance relative to their competition over a three-year period than those without ADHD. Now, think about my raffle ticket example from earlier, right? I was obsessed with selling more raffle tickets than anybody else in the school. I had to see my name at the top of that chart, right? But there's a trade-off, and that trade-off was usually my homework. Right? So I could be highly functional in one context while somewhat dysfunctional in another. Right? And before you think this is all really good news for people with ADHD in the context of entrepreneurship, I want to share one more finding that was a little more troubling. Those with ADHD did report much higher rates of things like dyslexia, anxiety, and depression. 
And I think this is an important part of the message that we shouldn't lose. Because for all the brilliance and success that's visible to the outside world, there exists this possibility of a dark underside that we can't see. And indeed, adults with ADHD do report some pretty negative work-life consequences. For example, research shows that they're more likely to be unemployed, they're more likely to lose their jobs, and they're more likely to receive poor performance ratings by their supervisors. So you might think that adults with ADHD, myself included, just make terrible employees. But it could also be that those adults with ADHD simply occupy roles in their company that aren't optimized to harness the good qualities and good attributes that they have as a result of their ADHD. So what I would like to see as a result of my personal experience and this research is an improvement in our ability to manage the downside, minimize the negative effects of ADHD, while maximizing and harnessing the positive aspects of an ADHD diagnosis. The problem is not that kids have these traits. The problem is that adults have identified these traits as a disabling condition. And for some kids, no doubt they are. But like I said, 12% of the youth in the US have an ADHD diagnosis. Can they all really be disabled? Or is it possible that maybe some of them are different or misunderstood? or possess different strengths and abilities, kind of like me, and I suspect like many of you. If we label these kids as having a disability, we're going to be more likely to treat them like they're disabled. And my belief is that this may not be the best response. What if, instead of thinking like ADHD is a disability, why don't we consider it just a different ability? And since we tend to find what we look for, why not look for the traits and the skills and the abilities that are gonna let these kids flourish into su successful entrepreneurs or maybe more successful entrepreneurial employees, right? So how do we do that? Well, it starts right here by spreading this message that in the context of entrepreneurship, ADHD can be a severe advantage, quite possibly a superpower. Next, instead of trying to manage, extinguish, or mitigate these traits among our youth, we should do a better job of refocusing and maximizing them. Right? And I know this is hard. In my business, we work with young children with disabilities all the time, and I see firsthand how hard it is for good teachers to manage a diverse classroom or to differentiate their instruction for every single child and meet them where they're at. It's very difficult, especially in today's environment with limited resources. But just because it's hard right now doesn't mean we shouldn't try to make an improvement for the future. And our education system needs a lot of help in this regard, right? I mean, it starts by giving good teachers better access to training and information, more effective resources for their kids with ADHD, but we need more than that. We know, for example, that physical activities and sports are really good for kids with ADHD, but what about other things that'll help them harness this potential superpower and turn them into successful entrepreneurs? Things like entrepreneurship clubs and camps, internship opportunities with startups, pitch and idea competitions. Next, we've got to help adults who have struggled with ADHD their entire life to manage the downsides of their ADHD while maximizing the upside. Adults with ADHD, instead of losing their jobs or having poor financial performance in their personal lives, maybe we can turn that into new venture starts and superior business performance and job growth. Adults with ADHD who want to start their own companies should be directed to resources that can help them. Places like university entrepreneurship centers, community incubators, small business development centers, all of those things can help adults who want to start their companies. Lastly, it does appear that ADHD can be advantageous in the context of entrepreneurship when it comes to very specific measurements of business success. However, it does also appear that entrepreneurs with ADHD tend to have some struggles in their business and personal lives as well. So I think there's an enormous opportunity here to help entrepreneurs who have ADHD to harness the superpower and let it flourish even more. And maybe, instead of suffering from their hyperactivity and their impulsivity, we could all greatly benefit from it, right? I mean, harnessing the superpower of ADHD among our entrepreneurs could be a great thing for everybody. The entrepreneurs themselves, their companies, the employees in the companies, and the economy at large. So in conclusion, a growing number of children are being diagnosed with ADHD every year. And eventually, they become adults with ADHD, with all the associated problems that come along with it. However, if we can recognize that in the context of entrepreneurship, ADHD can be an advantage, maybe even a superpower, then maybe we can all benefit. So I want to thank you all for listening. And I hope that this talk has inspired you to think of ADHD and other disabilities in a slightly different way.
Thank you for listening, but especially those of you with short attention spans, I feel your pain. Thank you. <laughs>